Hello and welcome back to the Midlands Outdoors channel today, back with another video. Wow, what a beautiful morning. You can just see the sun shining all over the fields into the distance. So we've got a few locations to check out today. We're heading to a first one called Rushuk, which is only down the road. We've got a church and we've got lots of history. Not only that, someone famous, John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, the drummer. Many may know who that actually is. He's actually famous worldwide and people from around the world actually come and visit his church to see the grave. So that's actually where we're heading. When we get there, we'll tell you more information behind it and we'll show you where the grave is actually located. So I can imagine not only the church, is a little bit of information and history behind Rushuk, so we'll cover that in the video. Where we're going to be heading is just taking some random roads and see where we just end up and then covering history from there. Because I've never been to this area before and it's actually new. And all these country roads, like you know, they lead to some really interesting places. So I think let's just get into the video and see where we end up. I'll tell you what, these roads are absolutely lovely to cycle. The seeing a few things on the way, some old houses, the views into the distance are really spectacular. So uh, I think we're nearly there. I think we've got to take this road, it takes us all the way up to Russia, and the church is somewhere right away at the top. So fingers crossed if I'm correct, and it should just be round the corner. So here we are, we've made it. This is the lovely village of Rushuk. We've got the Rushuk village all right around the corner. As you can just see right away there, got a sign, Rushuk village all. We've got some very old houses. I mean, that one in the corner looks like it dates really old. If I just zoom in to show you, I might go that one a little bit to show you what's down there. And there is some houses right around the corner. So this is actually the church where John Bonham is actually buried, St. Michael and All Angels Church, Rushuk. You can just see the beautiful church right at the back and his gravestone is just behind there and I've actually been to it before so let's go and check it out. So yeah, I've been to here before but I've only been to the church, I've not been to anything else around it. And then I came to this one and that's actually when I discovered John Bonham's gravestone. So this is actually why I've come down here to check it out. So right, we've got a lucky one today. The church is actually open so what we will do, we'll come back to the church in a little while let's go and check out the gravestone right away down the bottom so right just let me take my bags off and stuff i have reparked my bike around this corner just to keep an eye on it so right we are just finding where his gravestone is actually situated and there we go i've just found it straight away you can see all the drum stuff just onto the corner and then here we are john henry bonham we've even got the photo of him right away to the bottom just right there. So for many people who didn't know that the person from Led Zeppelin, John Henry Bonham, is actually a famous drummer for the band. He's actually buried at Rushuk. And there we go. So you know in this video now that he was actually buried here. So I know quite a lot of people come from worldwide just to come and visit this grave in Rushuk itself. But not only that, the church is open all the time. So if you do come here to check out the gravestone, not only that, you can go and see the beautiful architecture within the church itself. Today's here, cherished memories of the loving husband and father, John Henry Bonham, who died September the 25th, 1980, aged 32 years. It's really sad when you see things like that though, you know, 32 years when somebody went. You can imagine that a person would have had lots of life to, you know, do what he was doing, you know, spread his music and love across the world. And to see he died at the age of 32 is really sad. So, you know, while I'm here, I'm actually paying my respects to the person as well at the same time. But it says here, he will always be remembered in our hearts 
a good night, my love. God bless. Bless that quote on to there and sympathies go all the way out to the family of that person. It just really does bring a tear to me. I just feel like shedding a tear right now, you know, seeing a grave like this and all these toys, all these like little cars just on to there. It's just really sad to see this. You know, not only that, bits of guitar stuff just right around to the corner. And then not only that, the drummer stuff just on to the bottom. And there we go, there's John Bonham's grave, just right out the way here. So, you know, it's nice to show the viewers this uh, gravestone itself, because people from around the world might click on this video to, you know, to see this. And you get to see it one more time without coming to travel far to see it itself. But there we go, there's the gravestone. So, right, let's get back over to the bench and I will tell you a bit of history about Rushuk and we'll go in the church and go and explore it. Right, Rushuk is a village and civil parish in the Wire Forest district of Worcestershire. At the 2001 census it had a population of 138. The grave of John Bonham, the drummer of the English rock band Led Zeppelin, can be found in the graveyard of St Michael's Church. Here's a photo of Hill Farm House, Rushuk. Rushuk is a fertile and well-wooded parish having an area of 1,257 acres, 538 acres being arable land and 597 pasture. It is situated south of Chaddersley Corbett and was formerly a chapelry of that parish. When Ombersley Forest was partly disafforested in 1229, the new forest boundary passed through the middle of the town of Rushick to Le Brodeford. The other half of the town appears to have been in the forest of Feckenham. The Elmley Brook and one of its tributaries are the only streams in the parish. The main road from Kidderminster to Droitwich is the chief road, it enters Rushick by the Bradford Bridge. The village is situated almost in the centre of the parish, northeast of this road. The houses are scattered and surrounded by trees. In the south of the village there is a pound. But I've also just noticed there is some initials in carved onto the wall onto the corner. I have seen some dates in some of these churches with dates of 1800s with signatures above them, even early 1900s. So you can see churches give the best history of the place, especially tells the history of the village once more. As you may know, some of the gravestones, like those ones in the distance over there, that one's from 1892. So you can just see the various people that lived within Rushuk and are buried in the churchyard itself telling history and tales about the place. But let's go and roll around and go and check out inside the church. I bet you some beautiful architecture right away inside here. So here we are inside the church. This is the front porch as you come right away and we greet with a nice beautiful light right away at the top. And here we are, what's this church actually going to be like? Oh wow, this one's beautiful. You can just see right away to the top of this one, the wooden beams just up to there. The beautiful stained glass window right away at the back. I've just noticed with this church, a lot of the other ones what I've seen, the organ is situated right away above there, just at the top. The usual at the side of the churches, but that one's right away to the top up to there. And then once more, some beautiful stained glass windows on this side.
So we'll have one more look around and see if we can find any old dates for you and a bit of history. So I've just signed the book to say I've actually been here so people can see it and maybe check out my YouTube channel. So we've got something here, Millennium 2000, commemorated with the flagpole lighting, wall renovation and gravel, dedicated by Bishop Philip Goodrich, 1st of October 2000. So I think that's like stuff what's been done to the church. Got another one there, got a nice photo of the church in memory of somebody from 1913 to 2008. But I did see something really interesting, I think it's this one onto the corner. It says here, Rushuk Church before the organ was rebuilt in 1900 to 1920 by Walter James Bird of Birmingham and moved to the present position in the gallery. So you can just see we've got some writing on the wall right away at the back. And just above us is the organ onto the stand right above here. So I know it's really strange to see an organ in a different place where I've never seen it before in a church, just having it right away above. Because usually when you've seen on my videos when I've been to churches, the organ is always usually by the back stained glass window onto a corner like there. But the architecture of the roof is so cool, how it's got that wood lead north way across. Like your typical churches, most of them look the same. And not only that, bits and pieces for the organ, if I just zoom in, just at the back corner. So I did notice when exploring this church, I noticed it says here, we have got a bit of history. So it says Rushuk Parish Church, consecrated in 1285. So you can see it dates really far back a bit. And here's the list of all the rectors dating from 1313 all the way to 1922. Rectors of Rushuk and Vickers of Elmbridge. So that also dates from 1930 to 1966. And it says there, Rushuk and Elmbridge joined with the Hampton Lovett and Elmley Lovett, 1973 to 2010. So it's really cool to see that. So I will carefully go over the dates. So if you want to pause the video and see these, definitely feel free to. They go all the way down across the years there. I really do date far back a bit. I guess if you look up some of these names, it might tell you a bit of history about the area maybe, so it might be worth looking some of these up. But that's also another place that I do want to visit, Elmley Love It and Hampton Love It. So I'm not too sure how far those places are. But there we go, there's the church itself. Let's go and head back outside and we'll go and check out the architecture of the outside of the building. So right, here we go, so let's close this door. Wow, to come back out in the warmth, it's absolutely so warm out here. But this is actually the front door when you walk all the way in. You can just see the front door is really old. And I've just noticed, like I mentioned earlier, you've got initials carved into the wall itself. I haven't seen any dates so far, but we're going to have a look around the side. But I think this bit's actually newer than all the other brick was around the corners. So you can just see why churches decay really bad at times because of these type of stone what's used. You imagine the rain what batters against it, causes it to erode. I mean, that's why they say with some churches, never touch the walls because if you touch that, that would actually collapse all that bit there, causing more damage itself. But you can just see rolling round the corner, we've got some of the windows that we see on the inside. But you can just see the stained glass sort off on the outside of the building with a pattern showing. But let's go have a look around this bit. Right, I have just noticed onto the corner there, there is a very, very old farm. Well, I've just noticed that. I don't know if it's derelict or anything because I can just see some buildings right away to the back so that one's also a very old one so this is also the far back of it wow some really stunning architecture you can just see the top up to there the patterns are at the very top rolling around this corner yeah you can just see the back area to this corner here wow you can imagine some of these gravestones are really old that one's actually 17 Believe it or not, is that 1799? If it is, that's really dating back a bit. Especially that one, one more time. So you can see lots of old gravestones in Rushuk Church itself. And especially seeing the John Bonham one, that was really cool. So I'm gonna roll back around that corner, take some photos, and then I think we're gonna head off. But one more view of the churchyard itself. 
but if we just roll down onto the corridor here, you can just see some of these ones that I mentioned really do date back a bit. So you've got this one here, that one's actually dating to 1892, which I showed you earlier. 1896. Can't see the date on that one, actually I can, 1897. But one more view of the John Bonham grave before we leave. And there we go, one more view of the John Henry Bonham grave, just right the way here. It's really nice to see that, so there we go. Glad I covered this bit in the video. And then once more, you get a really nice view of the back of the church on this corner. You see the architecture leading from that side, and then you've got a bell tower. Right away to the top, you've got an English flag sticking right away out. So there we go, that's the church cover. Let's go and head down the road and go and check out the houses. There might be some really odd ones down there. But I think I'm heading to a place called the Triangle, so I think it's an historic interest point. So right, uh, let's have a walk out. <laughs> So right, let's have a look at that house what I viewed earlier, see how old it actually is. So it says here, for that house what I viewed earlier before we looked at the church, it says there, Court Barn, 1746 to 1983, so wow, it dates to the 1700s, that is really cool to see that. You've got the outside of the building, you can just see how old it is right away to the top. This angle, you've got some really old barn units once more stretching right away to the back. That's actually called the old rectory, I think, called the rectory, leading all the way down. Coming a little bit further down, I've just noticed here, I was right, the old rectory. Wow, look at the architecture of that building right away in front, a completely white covered building. So I'm guessing that could be the old rectory for the church, what we just actually visited. That is really cool to see that. Then once more, you can just see more history lurking right away down to here. Really cool to see that. Right, then we see what's further down, see what other things we can see. Oh, wow. That is an absolutely awesome walk. You can just see there, if I just zoom in, we've got a Worcestershire path leading all the way down, but not only that, it goes through a cornfield. If I zoom in, that looks an absolutely stunning walk. So there we go, there's some more walking ideas if you want to come and check this out in Russia. You can walk right the way through that cornfield and I think it goes far to the next couple of fields or so. So that's actually another thing that I might come down and see. I think they're just uh, modern houses from there now. But let's just roll around here and see where this even leads up. I don't think Rushik is actually that big in size. So I think the building, what we're coming to now, is the very old farmhouse, what I showed you earlier on the photo. And then I think that's about it then. So we will roll all the way back round and we're going to head to the triangle. So as you can just see, this is really awesome. This is a very, very old farm building. So this is actually what you're seeing on the image, what I showed you earlier. Absolutely awesome to see that. I can imagine it really does date back a bit, you know, to the 1800s maybe. Possibly maybe before that. But there we go, so it was nice actually to show you that one. Let's go and journey on. I'm going to find some more places to go to now. Absolutely swallowing down here, but let's go and head back through Russia and go and journey to where we were heading to. So right, I'm making my way to the triangle now, I've just noticed this. So right the way over there is Russia Trading Estate. I've noticed some very, very old units what do look derelict, I'm not too sure. But I can't get a view for you at the moment because I can't see into there. Nah, I can't see it at the moment because all the stuff's overgrown. But here we are once more up a nice country road. It's a nice one to cycle. Right, I've just got to take a break for a few minutes, but wow, the views over there are spectacular. But here we go, some really beautiful sights into the distance. We can just see the fields, the views right away to the back where the tree line is. Absolutely stunning.
I can really spend hours here just enjoying the views. I've just noticed right away into the distance. There's also another big factory of some kind with a big massive chimney sticking right away up. I have seen that from Clent Hills when they've been burning things and the smoke's actually rise right away up. But I think we're more into the countryside than what I was in the last video that went to Tardibig. So you can just keep on going, it'll take you right away into the distance and even further. Means I've got the two batteries with me, I can do even much more today. But what I think I am going to do, go to the triangle, then we'll come back this way and we'll go and check out another church which is further into the distance. But if we do pass that factory in the distance over there, I might show it you from the outside of it. But let's go and journey on and actually see where we end up. So here we go, I've made it. This place is actually called the Triangle compared to Google Maps. You can just see a triangle based area with roads leading in several sections. We've got a road there, we've got a road there. But not only that, we've got a road from where we've come from all the way behind. So right, I've gone back on Google, done a bit of research, but I found nothing at all apart from this. So it says on Google, the Triangle Historical Landmark in England. So it gives you the directions to Google Maps. And then some odd photos what people have uploaded with very old classic cars coming all the way down from it. So apart from that, I have no idea at all. But I must say, it's really cool to see it. They're a triangle shaped area with several roads leading in different parts. So what I will do, if I just come to the far back area here, because it's really quiet. You can just see you get a little bit of a better angle from this corner, but if we just roll back all the way down, you can sort of see what I mean, how it's like in a triangle shape. So if I zoom in from where my bike is, it sort of goes like in a triangle leading down. Maybe this is probably why they've called it the triangle, I have no idea. But then I want to know what's down that road there, whether that takes you all the way to Shentstone. And then there is another road leading that way, so I might take that way on the way back home and see where that actually goes. But there we go, I just wanted to show you this. It's really cool. So if you do want to come and check it out once more, I'll drop the pin for it in the description. You can come and take some nice photos down here actually. It's a really cool little spot. So there we go, that's the triangle covered. Our next location now is to go back down that road and go straight and see where we end up. I think it leads us to another church, right away into a field. Let's go and check that one out and see if it has a lot of history behind it. It's gonna be another interesting one. So right, I think we're going to be getting close to a place called Hartlebury. I'm not too sure. I did see on the maps, but there was a massive trade in the state. I think that's actually where that factory what I view down there is right onto there. So we might pass it in a little while. But I think there is a brook what comes all the way down. Then we've got the church on the side. So we're actually around the corner from it now. So let's go and check it out. So right, here we are. Just cut to the drive for the church itself. And here it is right away in front. Wow, this one's a cool one. We've got some writing greeting when we walk right away in for the front porch. Let's go and walk into the churchyard. So I'm guessing this one has a lot of history behind it once more. Oh wow, this one's stunning. If I carefully walk a bit closer, this one's actually got a date and carved into the top saying 1840. If I just carefully zoom in, and then you've got the bell tower right away to the top. Fingers crossed this one's actually going to be open. So yeah, it'll be cool once more if we can get inside this one and see what this is actually like. But the gravestones for this are absolutely really old. If I had to show you, that one's collapsed. That one's from the 1800s or before that because they've really rubbed out. Especially that one, that's had its toes. So right, good news, the church is actually open. I've been talking to the lovely people inside. And I tell you what, wait until you see inside this one, it's absolutely beautiful. I will tell you a bit of history before we come out. But I'll have my lunch now, head in there while it's open, while I'm here, and go and check it out. So I'll give you some cinematics and a tour of the church. But the outside, I will show you one more time as we leave, it's really stunning. 
So here we go in the church at Elmley Love It. Wow, this one's an absolutely beautiful one. You can just see the stall right away to the top of the church. But not only that, when I first walked in, it really blew my mind to see the architecture of the stained glass window right away at the front. It is really beautiful. And then once more, we've got the organ right around the corner. It's actually a really big organ, this one is. And up to there, some really beautiful stained glass window patterns. Wow. All the way down, you can just see the far back of the church itself. There we go, an absolutely beautiful church. I've really enjoyed exploring the Elmley Lovett Church just right away behind. And even the architecture from the outside is absolutely so cool. Imagine there's some really old stuff with up to the bell tower and some dates. Wow. Not only that, you do get some really nice views of the countryside area just at the back of the church. And what I wanted to show you is that what I showed you earlier. So if I had to zoom in, you see some sort of big industry right away at the back. That is actually some sort of incinerator, I was told. And it was actually purposely built to reduce pollution from burning things. So it's not like the other ones you do see. This one isn't too, too bad. So apparently I was talking to the people of the church who was in there and they said, that incinerator over there is perfect. It's not too really bad. There was having worries when it was actually first being built in case the smoke travelled all the way down, caused a lot of bizarre smells. But I said it's like perfect for the environment around this area, so that's actually not too, too bad. But I must say though, it does cause somewhat of an eyesore when you do view of it. You've got a beautiful countryside, then you've got that. I don't know, I mean, it depends if people like industry being nearby. But imagine in the countryside taking back onto fields, you know, it destroys the environment, sort of. You know, I can imagine, you know, small areas like where we've been, Rushuk other places in many years to come they could expand more industry more houses so you know it does really take back up on the land like you see right away behind you can imagine in 20 years time there might be houses on there you never know so it's a shame to see you know things do really get taken back of things like that you know i was told by the woman inside the church she said she didn't really agree with it really i mean being there a shame to see that and imagine what the people think of it in the village, I really don't know. <laughs> but let's go and have a sit down and we'll tell you more about the church itself. So right, some small information here. So it actually says Anglican St Michael, rebuilt in 1837, 
1840. So there was a date on the outside, what I showed you earlier, dating to the 1800s. Only the West Tower survives from the original 14th fir church, it says there. And I believe as well, it's actually a Grey II listed building on the Historic England listing. Yeah, as like I mentioned, the church really does date back a bit. But what I find cool is to see the original tower leading right away to the top. It's absolutely cool to see that. So there we go, lots of history behind this. And it would be cool to see what's up there, really. But most of the countryside churches, you can't go up to the uh, the bell tower itself, like you've seen in the other videos, where I've been in one of the black country ones. And they do every Tuesday or so, they do bell rings. I'm not too sure if they do it in the countryside ones. But yeah, let's go have another cycle and see where we end up. I'm going to head now into the Elmley Lovett section. I think it does go into Hartlebury, so we're going to have a cycle down there. But I think what we'll do, we'll loop all the way back round and then just head home from there then. So I think I've got to head to Musto Green, then all the way back home that way. But yeah, to show you one more pan around of the church, enjoy. <laughs> I tell you what, absolutely lovely people. I've enjoyed talking to those just into the church. They've greeted me all the way back out, absolutely lovely. So I will come back, I might cover more history of the place. But let's go and take the road, lead north right to the incinerator now and see what's around that area. Might be more things, you never know, but let's go and have a little bit of a cycle. So right, the road we want to take now is on the left, so we want to go that way. So we have to come back all the way down this road and go back the way we come. You see the sign there, if I just zoom in, it says Elmley Love It onto the corner. So right, let's go and see what's down here. Never been down here before, so it's going to be really interesting. I really enjoy visiting that church, it's a really nice one, but let's see what else we can find and journey on. So right, I thought I might show you something interesting now. You've got the church right away over there, just into the distance where we are on the main road. We've actually got a place here called the Rectory. And what I find cool about it, if I just zoom in, is the architecture. Wow, what a cool looking building that is. I bet there's some really old dates behind that one. And you can see on the sign there saying the Rectory. And then once more, if we zoom in, there's the church right back where we were standing. From there, we was actually viewing that incinerator right away at the back. So I'm not too sure how you get to it, whether it's actually somewhere behind. But let's journey on and see where this leads. Right, I'm gonna have a cycle down. I've noticed it's a big industrial estate. I'm not too sure if you can cycle on there, but we'll take a quick look. Let's go and check it out if we can. But if not, we'll come back down this road and I'll show you that from the outside, from this corner. Ah, oh, didn't see this, there we go. So there's actually a road on the right, Hartlebury. Let's go and take it. Let's turn this way. So no, I couldn't go that way. I think this goes right into Hartlebury, so we'll get the Google Maps up and see what's around here. So right, let's wait for it to go a bit quiet. Here's actually a Google Maps where it actually leads up, screenshot on there for you now. But right away behind, it's just a massive trading estate that's going all the way around. So onto there, you can't get on there because there is an office site. And onto it. There's actually a security stand, so I can't get close to the place where I want to get to to show you. So, I'm not going to bother going on there. But it's really interesting. So, what I might do is come back round and go and show you that thing from down the gate down there, so you can get a bit of a closer look at it. 
So right, what I might do is come back down this way at a later date and cover a video on Hartlebury and either further beyond. So I'm going back the way we come from. Then we can just see the views of the trading estate just onto the corner. So right, if we go back up the steep hill. Right, what is this? Is it some sort of old house or farm? If I just pan around and zoom in. I've just noticed a lot of derelict stuff just onto the corner here. We're going all the way down. I don't think you can actually get to them because all this here is all fenced off. But that's absolutely awesome to see that. I have no idea. I bet there's a bit of history behind that once more. So like I say, exploring country roads, you never know what you're going to see. Like I've just encountered that. And coming down, I've never seen that at all. Absolutely awesome. Let's go and journey on. Right back up this steep road, we're back at a junction. So this is actually a cycling route, I believe. Got some sign there saying number 45. So right, what I wanted to show you was somewhere down here on the left. There was lots of industry down here. So we'll pull up at the gate and we'll take a look. So yeah, I've just noticed all of this. It's just one massive trading estate going all the way to the back. So here we go, we get some nice views of the trading estate right away at the back. I can just see a few things just into the distance, but also we've got this big incinerator unit right away there, what was mentioned by the church and further before. If I just zoom in to show you, you can get some really cool views of it. So right, we've got some Google map images very close up of the building itself. So if we click onto that one, you can just see the outside of it all together. Really cool to see that. So I'm not too sure if that's actually some sort of incinerator unit, but it actually says MV Recover EFW Plant. Not too sure what it is. Does it actually have a website? Let's go and check it out. So yeah, I can't see any website onto there. So it would be interesting to know what that's actually all about, if I am correct. But I've always wondered what it is because I've seen it right on a distance from various places within Worcestershire. When I've zoomed in, I've seen the top of that stack going right away to the top. One more view to show you. There we go. But I tell you what, it's been absolutely warm. It's got to be the warmest today actually, so we're not going to be filming too much now. I think I'm just going to head all the way home. But yeah, it must be over 30 degrees. I just really can't cope. There's no air. I mean, breathing, sort of, is getting a slightly harder here. I think it's because how much warm air is surrounding me at the moment. This is literally, there's no breeze. Unless you're on the bike going really quick, it's just capable. But when you're standing here and talking, you really do feel the heat. So, yeah, see you soon. The Midlands Outdoors out. I hope you've enjoyed the churches and I hope you've enjoyed the little explore. But, yeah, heading home now. I need to get the shade ASAP. But yeah, thank you very much and subscribe if new. See you soon.